Hey and welcome to part 2 of the Star Wars style hyperspeed effect. This is the result we're going to be achieving um, in this tutorial. So yeah, let's start a new scene in Blender. And what we're going to do is split this screen here, split this window, and change it to the node editor. We can also press N to get rid of this sidebar here, we don't need that. And let's... Okay, so we also want to align the camera by pressing number pad 1, control alt number pad 0. And we can now add in our tunnel. So shift A, add in a cylinder. And we just zoom in so we can see a bit better. Press Tab to go into edit mode and we want to face select. We want to select this face and this one. And if we hit X we can delete the faces. Okay, so if we now if we press A we can select everything. If we hit space bar and then type flip, we want to flip the normals. As soon as we do this you can see that the shadow has changed because we're actually going to be looking on the inside of the tunnel so we don't need to worry about the outside. Okay, so now we can press R to rotate, then X 90 degrees, and scale this up a bit. Okay, that looks fine. In fact, let's scale up a little bit more. Okay, so now if we press S and then Y, we can scale it on the Y axis. We just want to scale it all the way up. Something like this, and just move it over a little bit so the camera is just on the front part of it. Okay, so we can also press Smooth to make it smooth shading if you want. Uh, and also make sure you save it, save your file. Okay, so if we look through here, we can see um, what the camera sees, and the circle is a bit too big. The opening or the exit is a bit too big. We can change that later on. But first, we want to create a texture for this uh, this tunnel. Okay, so we change this to textured view, and then we come over here to the material panel. Add a new material. Let's name this tunnels texture. So what we can do is just delete this, move these over, and delete this one. Diffuse texture. What we need to do is shift A, add a shader, emission, connect this up. move this out of the way, shift A, go to texture, we're going to be using a noise texture and we connect these up, this colour to that colour, like so. I'm also going to change this so we can see it a little bit better. Mm, okay, now we're going to add a few more nodes here, first we need to shift A, then we go to input, and then we go to texture coordinate. And then we use the um, the UV feed, and we just plug it into the vector. Shift A, converter, uh, no, sorry, vector. Then mapping, and this is what's going to um, animate the texture, make it look as if it's moving towards or away from us. So let's set the object as a cylinder, and we still can't see anything because we need to change this to material. There we go. Okay, so now we need to unwrap the um, this object, this tunnel. So let's just move this window a little bit. And if we jump in, tab into edit mode, and then press 7, and then press 5, we get a better view of it. And press U to unwrap. And we see, mm, yeah, it's not that great. We also need to press Control A, and we want to apply the rotation and scale. Um, it's going to be important later on as well, we do that. So we just unwrap that again. Actually, that looks terrible. <laughs> For some reason it looks like it's clipping. So let's just split this window here and change this to the UV image editor. And then down at the bottom here, let's just click this X to clear out the image or the render results and then press tab. Yeah, we can see that the unwrap is just terrible. So let's just jump back to top view by pressing on pad 7, U to unwrap and we can just do cylinder projection. But for some reason it's far too stretched. If we just tab back out we can see it's almost like lines, which is not what we, we don't want that at all. So tap back into edit mode and scale this, but press Y to constrain it against the Y axis. So we just want to S, Y, and scale this down a bit, maybe even a bit more. And um, we can come back later on and change it if we need to. Just scale a bit more. 
Mm, something like this. Okay, so we've got something like this. Don't worry about this line here. Um, later on in compositing, it won't even be showing, so don't worry about that. Uh, we do need to worry about the colour. We need to get rid of that multicolour horribleness. <laughs> Let's just move this out of the way. We will come back and use it later on, so we'll just move this out of the way. Shift A, add a colour. Hue and saturation. Plug this in here. Mm, we can also change these settings now while we're here. I found that a scale of 13 or more works well, or 18 at least, 18.8. Let's try that. And the detail can be, let's say, 3. Mm, let's bump it up to 3.5. Okay, that looks fine. Also, I probably want to change the scaling as well. Um, let's just get rid of this saturation. We don't want any colour on it at all, or for now. Let's move these over. And we're going to add an RGB curves. This is going to add, uh, give us a bit more contrast to the to the image. So I'm just going to make a simple S curve. Just click here and then here, and this part can be tricky. Depends on how you want the the cloud texture to look or this uh, rough texture to look. I will come back and change this later on because I won't be happy with it now. But let's just keep it like that. Shift A. We're going to add in brightness and contrast because we want to make the blacks more black and the whites a little bit lighter. So let's just save that. I'm just going to play with these values here until I find something I like. A bit darker. That looks better. And let's go back to this curve here. Make some adjustments. See, very small movements can give you um, quite big different results. So um, yeah, just play around with it until you find some sort of pattern that you want. The trick is to not get rid of all the detail. It's easier said than done. Okay, so let's just jump back into edit mode. And let's scale this down a bit more because I want it to be more stretched. Jump back to camera view. Scale it down on the Y only. Uh, a bit more. That looks about fine. Okay. So now we want to add a little bit of colour to it. Uh, it's pretty simple to do. We, the rest of the colour and the details are going to be done in the compositing, but for now we can just Shift A, add in a uh, colour, and then we can add a mix RGB. Plug this in here. Let's change this colour to blue, and we also want to change this from mix to multiply, and we can increase this to something a bit more. Yeah. Also check clamp. Let's just increase this a bit more. Again, most of the colour work will be done in the um, in the compositing, so don't worry about it now. Uh, we just want to give it a base colour at least. Okay, so that looks good. Uh, it looks fine. It'll it'll do for now. What we need to do is actually animate the texture. So that's why we put this mapping in this mapping node in. Now. We need to find out where the uh, the rotation or where the location is. Since it's actually on the Y, we just need to go to the location and Y. We need to find out which way it's moving. So if we increase the Y direction, it's moving away from us. If we go into the negative values, it's going to come towards us. Now, it doesn't really matter which way you, you make it go, whether forwards or backwards. We can always change this later on in the compositor. Um, so I'm just going to increase this to... I'm just going to find a value that I like. Okay, so I found like a value of 2 should be okay for me. So we're going to animate this now. On the first frame, we want to add a keyframe here by pressing I. We also want to set the end frame to be, let's say, end frame 150. And then let's jump to the end frame. Then on the Y, let's set a value of 2. And then press Enter. So when we scrub through here, we won't be able to see update on the, on the left-hand side here, but it will update here. Actually, why didn't it update then? I just scrub through the timeline. Oh, I know why. I didn't actually add a keyframe. <laughs> so go to the Y, press 2, hit I to add a keyframe, 
there we go. So now when we scrub through, we can't see it on the left hand side updating, but we can on the right. So it gives you a bit of an understanding or an idea of what it's going to look like, or at least the speed of it. Um, we can also do the rotation, but I'm going to do it uh, on here instead of there. I'm just going to press I to add a keyframe for the rotation. And then I'm going to jump to the end frame and then rotate it a little bit on the Y axis. Uh, let's say about here, a bit more. Okay, so I'll press I to add a keyframe for the rotation. And we can see that it rotates. Now the problem that we have um, with this is that it's, it speeds up and slows down. We want it to be moving at a constant speed. Um, see when it gets to the end it starts to slow down. So we can actually fix that. If we split this window here and move this over a bit. Sorry if it's getting a bit too confusing or a bit too jumbled but it will it will make sense in a moment. So let's split this, uh, change this to the graph editor. So what we can do is we hit A to select everything and then we press V and then we select vector. Now we can see that the tunnel texture which is moving towards us and also the rotation of the tunnel they're both moving at a constant speed which is as, which is what we need it to do. So we see it's not slowing or it's picking up speed or slowing down it's just moving at one rate. Now I notice that the rotation is far too much so I'm just going to change that again. I'm just press Alt R to clear the rotation and just rotate it on the Y just a little bit. Press I to add a keyframe there we go. I mean, you can. It's up to you how much rotation or how much speed you put on everything. This is just my best guess. This is there is no. Um, I don't know, there's no tutorial showing you how to do the timing of things on a light Star Wars light speed effect. <laughs> anyway, so I just rendered this out. Give it a quick render um, just to see the speed of everything, and it all works fine. It seems fine to me. So we can just join this window now. And so the speed of everything was fine. I do want to make some tweaks to the texture itself, the colors of it. Uh, I want to make some, and also the the circle. It needs to be smaller. So we select the camera, and then go to the camera panel, and reduce the focal length to say around twenty. That should sort of match the uh, the scene we made before. Maybe twenty two, something like that. Okay, so select the tunnel again. I want to change the texture of the tunnel. So I'm just going to play with this uh, the well this curve here, this S curve, and also the contrast. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm going to change the S curve here. The trouble with this is I it was hard to find something that you like, and every time I move it, I find something else. I think well that looks better. Okay, so I just want to add a shift A, add an invert, a color, and then invert. Just add this between them. So we show you the difference. We mute this. It's really it's just flipping the colors between blacks and whites. Um, I, I don't know. I think that looks a little bit better. But I also want to change this. I'm never going to be happy with the this S curve. <laughs> I literally probably could spend all day just twiddling with this value. So it's up to you how you want it to look. I think that looks a little bit better now. Um, yeah, the rest of the work is now going to be done in the compositor, so we can just switch this to the scene tab, get rid of the vignette, since we don't need it right now. And we also want to make sure we check use nodes and backdrop. Just tidy things up here a little bit. Okay, so shift A, and we want to add in a filter and glare. Just move these out of the way so we can see a little bit better. Okay, so as soon as we've had this this glare node in, things are going to take a little bit longer to render, which is not a big deal. Um, also takes a little bit longer to update. <laughs> we need to change this from streaks to fog glow. We can also leave it at medium. Increase this mix to one. Now the way this works, when we uh, reduce the threshold, the more the the, uh, the brightness of the shadows, or the brightness of the lights shine through, so the more of the glow we get. So I'm going to change this to say maybe 0.1 and also reduce down the mix to say maybe 0.1 as well. So 
you just play with these values until you get something you like. I'm also going to increase the size to 9. That size is the blur, so it gives it a bit of a more of a blur. Okay, so Shift A, add a color. We're adding an RGB curves. And this here, if we do now, we're going to give this an S curve and it should brighten up the colors a bit more. There we go. Looks a little bit better. Save, make sure you save it in case it crash like it did to me a minute ago. Okay, so I'm just going to reduce this focal length. I'm going to just play with it a little bit. That circle is a bit too big. Give that a re-render. See how that looks. Shift A add a brightness and contrast. I just want to make it a little bit lighter, but also darken the blacks as well. Uh, wrong way. Change this. Again, it's the same as the other S curve before when we're trying to, you know, make it look nice. It's you always find a different uh, look. So yeah, just keep playing about with it until you're happy with how it looks. I'm going to increase the blues. Maybe that's too much. And this is all down to your preference, what you want, it, what style you want to go for. You don't have to have blue, you don't have to have it this bright. You can choose anything you want. So yeah, I'm going to shift A, add in uh, a new node. I've not used this before. If we go to filter, sunbeams, I've seen it. Um, but I've never really had the use for it. I never needed to use it. So it's pretty fun that I can use it now. Let's just connect these up and see how it looks. We just need to increase this ray length to 1. And we can see we get this uh, sunbeams effect, which is pretty cool. So I just need to mix this back now with the original. So Shift A, add a color. Mix. Where are you? <laughs> well, let's um, connect these up. Let's change this from mix to multiply to add. And we can swap these round. So uh, maybe something like that, maybe a bit more. I just want to bring the original back in a bit more. So if we just shift A, color, and then mix. Um, yeah, mix. I mean, we could have just copied that ad shader, add node, but let's just connect these back up, check clamp, the checker box, and if we reduce this factor now, we want it way down. Uh, if we see it at zero, how it looks, it's a bit too much. So we just increase it to say 0.1, yeah, something like that. So you just want to keep adding a few more nodes. If you want to keep adding more details to it or a few more effects, then you can keep going. But I'm just going to say render this out now. So make sure you select the output. Also make sure you select the file type and the frame rate that we set for the star field. And then I'm going to set maybe 500 frames. Uh, sorry, 500, 500 samples. And give that a render. I'm going to render this now as a movie clip. You can do it as an image sequence or a movie clip. It's up to you. And then we can move on to the next step.